Hello and welcome to the first training module in this Atonics Migration Training Module Series. Um, this module provides an overview to getting started with Cytonics. And it's one of um, six modules. Um, so the, the following five modules will provide more detail on, on a variety of topics of working with Cytonics. Uh, module two will look at the supercomputing file systems and, and how to go about transferring your files from our existing infrastructure uh, to the new Cytonics system. Module three will provide information on the software that's available on the system, uh, which has been provided by um, HPE and the, the PAUSI staff. Module four provides information on how to actually install your own software um, on the system. Uh, module five walks you through the process of setting up job scripts to, to run your workflows on Cytonics. And module six talks about how to manage your data through the, the life cycle of your computational work and, and make use of our Acacia object storage with your workflows on Cytonics. So what is Cytonics? Um, Cytonics is Pawsey's new uh, supercomputer and we've actually named it after an Australian mammal um, on the island of Rottnest, uh, the quokka, and Cytonics is the, the scientific name uh, for, for the quokka. Um, in terms of Pawsey's capital refresh, um, thanks to some funding from the Australian federal government, Pawsey has been in the process of refreshing all of its um, infrastructure and we have so far completed um, a number of procurements, um, initially the Garawala Compute Cluster and Astronomy High Speed Storage, which has been supporting the work of the MWA and ASCAP radio telescopes, and also our Nimbus uh, cloud service. Um, we've recently brought the new Acacia object storage uh, into production, and we're now working on uh, migrating all our users uh, onto the new Cytonic supercomputer uh, for its first phase. So in terms of what the new supercomputer looks like, um, it's a significant increase in the computational capacity uh, for the, the our researchers that are working with supercomputing infrastructure at Pawsey. You can see here um, on the very left in the, in the orange dot is, represents the computational performance of our previous system, Magnus, uh, which was one of the first petaflop supercomputing systems available to researchers in Australia. And so, we're now migrating to Cytonics phase one, which is this um, middle dot, um, which represents 2.7 petaflops. So um, an initial step up on, on the processing power of Magnus. And then coming later in the year will be the, the second phase, um, which is going to increase that up to um, 50 petaflops. And so um, an important thing to note is that in, in order to install that second phase, um, we need to decommission magnesium because it's physically um, in the way of, of that second phase. So it's, it's really critical that we have a, a smooth migration from Magnus to Cytonics phase one to enable that um, installation of, of that second phase. So in terms of the overall um, connection of Cytonics into the other pause infrastructure, uh, you can see at the top here, we have Cytonics and it's connected to um, a 15 petabyte Luster file system that provides the, the scratch file system uh, for Cytonics. And on the right, we see the other pause systems. Um, so while we'll be decommissioning uh, Magnus, Zeus and Galaxy, um, Topaz will remain um, in production until phase two arrives, and we'll also have some astronomy infrastructure that, that is ongoing as well. These are all connected together by the uh, PAUSI networking infrastructure and to some of our storage infrastructure. At the bottom here, you can see our Banksia tape system and the new Acacia object storage. So to provide an overview of the Cytonics hardware, um, you can see on the diagram here, the uh, infrastructure that will be available with phase one. Um, in the, the top left box um, access, you can see we have our, our login nodes and data mover nodes, as well as some visualization nodes. Um, initially, we'll be continuing to use our visualization facilities on Topaz, um, and those visualization nodes will be uh, available later um, in phase one. In the center in orange, you can see our compute, um, which consisting of 504 uh, CPU compute nodes. These are powered by um, AMD Zen 3 CPUs, which we'll be going into a little bit more detail shortly. 
And there's also eight um, high memory nodes uh, available um, with up to a terabyte of memory. So uh, our existing users of, of uh, Zeus and Magnus um, may be familiar with Magnus being uh, primarily used for, for large scale uh, MPI jobs. And then we have Zeus that has been providing some of the um, niche applications such as the visualization, um, the uh, copy queue for moving data around, uh, high memory nodes and longer running jobs. So our, um, one of the changes as we move to the Satonic system is all of that um, capability is being combined on one system. Um, so all of those use cases will be supported by Satonics. Um, in the top right, we see the file systems. Um, it's worth noting that these are new file systems. Uh, you may be used to having um, sort of the same home file system on all of the existing pause infrastructure. And so the same files will be there, whether you're on Zeus or, or Magnus or other systems. This will be changing with Satonix. Um, so it's actually a, a new file system. Um, and you will be needing to transfer the files that you need across to these new file systems as part of the migration, which we'll be covering in more detail in module two. Um, these are all connected together by the Slingshot network. Um, and it's also connected through the Pawsey network out to the Acacia storage. To talk a little bit about the compute node architecture, um, we have uh, each cabinet of Satonix containing eight chassis um, and each chassis containing eight compute blades that are connected to the switches. Um, each compute blade contains four nodes, um, each with two processors for a total of 128 cores per node. Um, it, it, it's a minor note, um, it's worth noting that adjacent nodes are not connected to the same switch, um, but the, the scheduler should take care of placing jobs appropriately for you. So for the uh, compute node processor, we have uh, an AMD Zen 3 processor, um, and this is um, a 64 core processor with two of them on the node. And within the processor, there are eight of these chiplets that each contain uh, eight cores with a shared um, layer three cache. Um, and so if you're interested in finding out more about the Zen3 architecture, um, there's a link here you, you can follow uh, to read more about it. Um, and then that will hopefully provide um, some further information. In terms of the interconnect layout, uh, the Satonix interconnect uses a dragonfly topology um, that's quite similar to Magnus to connect all the nodes together. Um, one of the um, steps forward with Satonix is that the number of hops it takes for traffic to um, move across the network is lower um, and the base speed of the network has increased significantly. So in terms of the, the key hardware changes, uh, we've move from a 24 core Intel node to 128 core AMD node. Uh, we're changing from uh, 64 gigabytes of memory um, per node on, on Magnus up to 256 gigabytes for most of the nodes um, with those additional eight high memory nodes. Uh, due to the, the large number of uh, cores on a node, this means that the uh, memory per core is now uh, around two gigabytes. And if you've been using Magnus um, and Zeus, you may be familiar that the uh, Magnus node access is exclusive. Um, so only one person can run on a node at a time, um, which has made sense for those large scale uh, production uh, jobs. Uh, whereas on Zeus, because the, it supports those um, uh, data moving pre and post processing jobs, it's been possible to share node access. So on Satonix, it will be possible to um, have used part of a node um, to support both those, those types of workflows, um, but it'll also be possible to um, request exclusive access to nodes for, for your, your large scale jobs as well. And we'll, we'll have more details on that in module five. Um, we also have those, those changes around the file systems. Um, so the, the project storage on group is, um, should be moved to the Acacia object storage. Um, software installations should now take place on the software file system. Um, and we have those new scratch and home file systems. So to provide a little bit more detail around the storage, um, the home file system is very similar to the existing home file systems. It's just a, simply a case of it's a new one. So you, you need to be moving the files across to it. 
the software file system is uh, replacing some of the functionality of group and um, the PAUSI file system in terms of being a place to install software. We don't recommend transferring previously installed software from Zeus and Magnus to the new um, software file system uh, because Sotonix has a different uh, computational architecture. It's really important the software be installed um, on the new system um, and, and not copied across. For Scratch, we have a new um, significantly larger Scratch file system um, that works in a very similar way uh, to the previous one. It will have a, the 30 day purge policy um, that you may be familiar with on our existing uh, super infrastructure. Uh, and it's there for files that are actively being used as part of the computational workflow. And finally, we, we now have the Acacia object storage that's um, replacing root. To talk a little bit around the software um, overview and changes. So we have a very similar environment to what you see on Magnus um, in terms of the, the Cray programming environment. Um, you have the uh, programming environment uh, Cray and programming environment GNU available um, as usual. One change is that because we're moving from the uh, Intel to the AMD CPUs, um, the program of Intel will no longer be available and is instead replaced by a program of uh, AOCC. Um, we, you may also notice that there's updated versions of a lot of the packages that you're familiar with seeing on the system. Um, and we are continuing to provide a, a subsection of the, the scientific software that's used by a lot of groups uh, to avoid different groups from having to sort of install the same software over and over again. Um, we're also moving from um, a tool called Mali to a tool called SPAC for our installation, um, which, which may be of, of use for, for some project groups in terms of supporting the installation of software. And we'll have more information on that in modules three and four. So that brings us to our migration overview. Um, you may notice that we have a lot of um, cake baking photos. Um, we, we've had, uh, if you've attended our introductory training, sort of a, a cake baking analogy for some of our supercomputing work that we've used from time to time. And when we were having the um, Cytonix installed and, and no power on site, we kind of got together and took these photos, uh, which is why there's a, a lot of um, cake baking related photos in the slide deck. So for the migration overview, um, our current schedule is we have an approximately 12 week long uh, migration access window that we're in. Um, and so the reason why this is relatively brief is because Magnus is currently sitting where we need to install the, the second phase of Cytonix. So over the next um, 12 weeks, will be providing access to project groups. Um, the project access will be staggered. Um, so um, over the first five weeks of the migration period, we'll be putting on groups of projects uh, with a prioritization of the, the larger projects to try and make the, the most of the available time on, on Cytonix. Um, at the end of the migration period, um, we'll be removing access to Magnus and Zeus. Um, and all of the production work for the merit allocation projects uh, should be taking place on Sedonix. Uh, so it's, it's really important that as part of the migration, you not only start using Sedonix, but also finalize the work that you're doing on, on Magnus and Zeus. So in terms of support for the migration, we have a number of different um, avenues for that support. Um, one is these uh, migration training modules. So these are available both as recordings uh, as well as live um, sessions that you can register to attend on the PAUSE events website. We also uh, are holding weekly Q&A sessions. So if you, if you are hitting issues where you find it will be really useful to um, come and discuss them with us, um, definitely sign up to one of these Q&A sessions and come and share um, the, the things that you're experiencing um, so we can help you guide you through the migration process. We've also taken the opportunity to update our supercomputing documentation. Um, and we, we've done that with the help of a technical writing specialist. So we're hoping that um, 
they're going to be in good shape for helping you through the migration. And within that, there's also a uh, specific page, the Satonics Migration Guide, uh, to guide you through some of the key changes that we're talking about um, in these migration training modules and also provide links into the documentation to help you quickly find the um, relevant information around those changes. Uh, and finally, if, if you are hitting problems and, and you're not able to make it to a Q&A session, um, definitely always let us know through um, raising a ticket in the user support portal, um, because if we're, if we're aware of it, we can um, move towards trying to provide you advice on, on how to, to navigate um, anything that you may come up may come up while you're doing your migration. So what would a migration um, look like? Um, so this flow chart shows the key steps to migrating to Cytonics from the previous Pawsey systems. Um, so to start, start off with one great thing to do to get started is to just log on to Cytonics um, to, to make sure that you can do so. Um, and then one of the early activities to look at is the migration of data from the existing systems to the new file systems. So that can include um, migrating your Slurm batch scripts um, from wherever you previously had them in home group scratch um, to the new software file system. Um, so we recommend the job scripts. Um, if you have templates, you should have them um, sitting in the software file system. And then as you go to use them with jobs, we recommend um, having a copy of um, on scratch with your job um, so that you, you know what work was, what jobs group was used to submit that, that particular piece of work. For um, the home file systems, um, sometimes there's uh, different uh, Piece of data that's sitting home that you might want to migrate across in configuration files. Uh, there's the working data that you may be using act with active jobs uh, on, on Magnus or Zeus that need to go from the previous Scratch or group file systems to the new Scratch file system. And the uh, any long-term project data that you had um, on the group file system should be moved into the Acacia object storage. Um, once you have your data on, on the Cytonix file systems, the next thing that we recommend doing is to look through the available software and, and versions available um, and, and see if there's, um, I guess, already software installed on the system that supports the kind of work that you're needing to do. Um, and then from there, look at the domain specific software that you have um, that, that may need to be installed. Um, it's also, when moving to new systems, a good time to consider um, adopting newer versions of the, the software packages that you've been using, because uh, often they provide better performance or, or have newer features. Once you have your, your software ready, um, the next thing to do is to look at your Slurm batch scripts. Um, and so there's the, the the capability of, of having um, quite complex workflows on Cytonics. So having jobs that stage data from Acacia to scratch, do any pre -pro another job to do pre-processing to prepare data, um, the main computationally significant jobs that, that are actually running simulations and doing data processing, um, post-processing or visualization jobs and the uh, transferring of data products from, from scratch to Acacia. And so there's the ability to sort of chain these jobs together and create um, more complex workflows, uh, which we, we cover in modules five and six. Um, and finally, um, once you have your job scripts ready, it's, it's then time to start uh, running some test job scripts um, with the scheduler um, and then starting to, to use Cytonics for your, your main computational research. Um, I think just to talk quickly about some best practices, uh, you should only move data to Cytonics that you're going to need on Cytonics. Um, if there's data that is no longer needed, um, it should be on the old file systems, it should be deleted. Um, or if there's data that needs to be moved off to um, institutional um, repositories, then, then that's a, this is a good time to do that as well. Um, as I mentioned, don't transfer software. It's really important to, to reinstall the software um, to make sure it's going to run well on, on Cytonics. Um, and finally, one thing that we, we have noticed um, previously is sometimes uh, researchers set up their environment in their um, login scripts. So for example, like a bash RC file, um, and this can make it difficult to, to share work with colleagues and also to 
um, get help from um, the, the Pawsey staff because our environment will not necessarily match what you've set up in your um, batch scripts. So we really recommend doing that kind of work in a file um, that gets sourced as part of your job scripts. Um, so that way, when you run a job script, no matter who's running it, it, it does the same thing consistently. So um, this is just a use case for a, a migrating a large scale MPI job from Magnus. It sort of walks through those tasks um, that I mentioned on the previous slide. And you can see here we've um, highlighted the, the Slurm batch scripts to talk about some of the changes specifically for those large scale jobs. And so things to be aware of is there is um, 128 cores and 256 gigabytes of memory to a node, um, which should be um, considered when uh, updating your um, job configuration. Um, so you can see here on the right, we have a 1024 core Slurm batch script, uh, which is using all 128 cores on the node um, with one uh, process uh, per core. And, and that's doing that with just four nodes, um, which I, I think is, is a really um, exciting part of, of working on Sotonix is just seeing the um, scale that you can achieve um, on the system. Um, so you, you're getting to that sort of 1000 core uh, mark with just four nodes is, is truly incredible. Um, and we have a lot more detail on, on, on writing job scripts in module five. So uh, if you're coming from Zeus, um, again, it's, it's the same overall um, workflow. And here we have um, an example uh, of just, if you're just planning to run a, a one core job uh, to do some, some minor pre-processing or post-processing, and you can see it's just requesting one task with one task per node um, and one process per core um, to sort of run that small job. And, and this will share the, um, share the node. Um, and, and we'll be going through um, more details on, on how that works in, in module five. So it's, it's worth being aware that um, Sotonix phase one does not contain any GPU nodes. These will be arriving with phase two uh, later in the year. So if you are doing GPU uh, computational work, you should continue using Topaz for the time being. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the uh, GPU processes that will be arriving in Sotonix phase two, uh, I recommend watching um, some of AMD's videos on the MI200 series. And if you're interested in attending uh, training specifically on the, these GPUs, uh, please get in touch with um, our, our staff at training at pausey.org.au. So um, how do we log into Sotonix? Uh, it's very similar to the way that you've been logging into our existing Pawsey computing systems. Um, the, the key thing is there's a new host name, sotonix.pawsey.org.au that should be replacing the old host names um, in your SSH clients. And the, the login node provides access to the Slurm scheduler, the create programming environment and, and the file systems um, in a similar manner to our existing systems. If you are copying um, large amounts of data, uh, please don't use the login node. Uh, we have a copy petition uh, for significant data movement. Uh, we have more detail on how to do that uh, in module two. In terms of the best practices for the login node, um, they are shared, so, so please don't run computational work there. Um, we have specific petitions for, for different types of work. So if you're compiling software, debugging software, or doing initial benchmarking and profiling, please use the debug petition. If you're transferring data, use the copy petition. And if you're running uh, computational work, um, the, then it should be running the work petition, which is, is there by default. What does logging onto Sotonix look like? Um, so if you have a, a terminal client, uh, then it's simply a matter of SSHing with your, your Pawsey username into sotonix.pawsey.org.au um, and providing your password, um, which um, note that some clients, the password won't show up as you type it. And we have prepared a page um, with more step-by-step -step instructions um, in our Sotonix user guide. Um, called how to log into Sotonix. It also contains instructions for um, GUI clients such as um, PuTTY or Mobarex term. 
So that brings us to the end of training module one. Um, I encourage you to, to look into the remaining five training modules as they provide a lot more detail um, on, on each of those steps. Um, as I mentioned, we have the uh, migration documentation um, and supercomputing documentation available to, to guide you through the migration process, um, which you can find on, on, on Pawsey's um, documentation portal. We have the migration um, sessions, um, such as the one that you're watching, available on our YouTube, and as well as those live sessions you can sign up for on the Pawsey events page. And finally, if, if you need any help at all, uh, please contact us uh, via the, the service desk. Um, thanks for watching.